Welcome to part three of my tutorial in installing Actions in Photoshop Elements 7. In the first part we installed Actions in the effects area. In the second tutorial we installed Actions in the new guided area. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create the XML files. Um, now the XML files are only applicable to the effects area. You'll remember over here in the guided area that if we get the creators, the designers of the actions to put them in sets for us, they will be grouped here in sets. And so um, this is only ac applicable to if you want to install those actions in groups in the effects area. You'll notice that uh, the first icon here is for filters, the second is for layer styles, the third is for photo effects. The photo effects area is where we're going to find the actions and the fourth one is for all and so if you click on this fourth one it doesn't group them. Um, you, I can go down and find every single one of my atomic cupcake actions in here, but they won't be grouped in a drop down. But this area does include both the photo effects slash actions, layer styles, and filters. So if you wanted them all together, easy to find, so you, you're not going back and forth, you could use this area. But under the third icon, under this drop down menu, you can see that they're in groups. You can use show all and they won't be in groups and every one of them that's installed will be here together. Uh, but you can see I've already added the XML files for these two and they are both also found under the group metal. And that's what we're going to do is learn how to make the XML files so that you can create the a new groups under this drop down menu under the third icon. And so let's go back here to the tutorial and um, you'll notice that uh, there are two sections, one for Photoshop Element 6 because this um, XML code is different here than it is for version 7 here. And so um, you can uh, read the appropriate instructions if you want to install it in 6. I have those available, but um, I'm going to do a version 7 as a sample in this uh, video tutorial. And so I have here a form that you can uh, download from my website uh, to utilize in creating these XML files, or you can just go into your um, folder where all the uh, files are to be placed and find one um, from one of the ones that came with Photoshop Elements and copy it uh, maybe to your desktop and use it. Uh, but we're going to be working with my form one. You may want to copy the form and save it and then uh, utilize a new, new fresh copy of it. But what you want to do is to have this open up in WordPad. If you right click and choose Open With, and I'm doing this in Photoshop Elements Vista. This is the same way it works in S XP and I don't know how it works in, in Mac, but hopefully you can follow along. And I could choose WordPad here, but I want to choose Default Program. And it comes up with some recommended programs, and you're going to see WordPad there. Now, um, it's not recommended that you use Notepad because Notepad will throw in some extra lines and spaces and things sometimes. WordPad work, works much better. If you do not see WordPad here, click on Other Programs, and you should be able to find it. Down here, make sure this is checked. Always use the selected program to open this kind of file choose WordPad and click OK. And it's going to go ahead and open that. But now every time you go to open up a XML file, the default is set to WordPad and just double click on it and it will open up in WordPad. 
I have in the form here got um, some capital letters. It says name of action and name of action. And we are going to be creating an action for this atomic, an XML file for this atomic cupcake chrome action. And here's what I do rather than manually typing because everything must be named exactly as this action is. You'll see here is the ping file and it is named exactly the same as the action. And that is the same for these um, XML files. So what I'm going to do is just click down once on this action and then once again kind of a little pause in between. You're going to see it come up like this uh, in a box uh, this is how you can rename the file. Then I'm just going to click Control C, and that puts that name into my clipboard. And I minimize this, and then I'm going to go back into my form, and I'm going to delete the name of action and control V to put the name of my action. And now this has to be repeated on both sides of the equal sign. And this is, of course, different in the uh, six. Uh, you'll be replacing different words in different places, but it, it's just the similar type of thing. So I have the name of it in there twice where it is supposed to go. And you'll see down here now is the word category. Now, this is whatever category you want to make up. And you remember in my sample, I had mine named AC Metal. And so I'm just going to manually type this in here. And now every atomic cupcake action that has something to do with creating a type of metal, I'm going to use this exact same category. You can make up whatever categories you want. But in each XML for each action, you're going to add the exact same name of the category that you have chosen and then we're going to uh, save it and close it out. Now the name of this file, you'll remember, also has to be exactly the same as the action. Now in version 7 they have this dot metadata at the end of the name and I've left that on there. They don't have that in version 6. And so we're going to click down once, pause, click down again, and you'll get where you can rename this file once more. I'm going to delete the word form, and the name of the file is still in my clipboard, so I'm going to hit Control V on my keyboard. It goes right in there, click off of the file, and it is now named exactly as the action. Then you're going to take that file you just created and drop it right in here into um, the same folder uh, that you have the ping file and the action file. And you can see I already have mine in here. Um, in version 6, um, you'll have to go back to the instructions, but I think the, that uh, XML file is in a separate folder. Now, um, before we start Photoshop Element 6, I believe it's important to delete the media database. You don't have to do that if you're just installing actions, but I'm pretty sure when you're installing the XMLs, you have to do that. Um, you can try it without doing it. That's fine, too. I'm not sure what it would do. Um, so I'm going to just click up here in my bar and back out to where it says 7. And you'll see there's a thumb thumbdatabase.db3. I've never really had to delete that one. If you have problems, you can delete that one. Um, up here in the uh, locale and then NUS, you'll see here the media database. So just, I'm not going to delete it because I don't need to right now, but just um, select it, delete it, and then restart Photoshop Elements, and this file will be regenerated and recreated. So don't be afraid of. Um, and then when you're done, um, it might take a long time for that to regenerate, but then these will then be seen in groups in the drop down menu.